Cerebras has done something really remarkable with GLM 4.7 by making Frontier AI models accessible to everyone. The original GLM 4.7 model, which we covered in this video extensively, has 355 billion parameters and requires a massive 400 GB of disk space, which is completely impractical for most researchers and developers. And I also couldn't install it, so I had to use the hosted version. But what Cerebras has achieved now with something called as REAP compression is extraordinary. They have reduced the model size by 40% down to around 218 billion parameters while maintaining almost identical performance. This means you get 97.6% of the original coding ability and 96.7% performance on agentic benchmarks. In this video, we are going to install it locally and then I will also tell you all about REAP and how exactly they did it in very simple language but still it will be very much understandable for technical people. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member. Please follow me on X if you are looking for AI updates without any hype. So let's get started. Look, installation I will do in a bit, but let me first try to explain what exactly is this re because this really democratize large language model because it allows individuals and small teams to run state of the art model on our own hardware. Now let's check out what exactly is REAP and why does it work so well. REAP stands for Router Weighted Expert Activation Pruning. It's a new compression method which is designed for mixture of expert models. Think of it this way. In these massive, massive models, not all experts contribute equally to the final output. Some experts are rarely used or have minimal impact when they are activated. REAP identifies these low impact experts by considering two key factors. How often the router selects each expert and how much that expert actually changes the final result when it is selected. The breakthrough insight from Cerebras research is that pruning these redundant expert is fundamentally better than merging them, especially for generative tasks like code generation. When you merge experts, you lose the router's ability to dynamically control them independently, causing what they call functional subspace collapse. Pruning avoids this problem entirely by maintaining the router's operational freedom over all surviving experts. So I hope that this makes sense. If it still doesn't, just put it in your question in the comment. Happy to answer it out. Okay. Now, what I have done is I am going to use the Llama.cpp, which is a very fast inference engine built in C or C++, runs on various backends. You can even run it on CPU if you are brave enough. And then I am going to use the Unslots quantized version, which they have just done a few minutes ago. And because I am going to use my this system Ubuntu and my GPU card is this uh, DGX one. A100 with 80 GB of VRAM courtesy masked compute and by the way if you are looking to rent a GPU or VM or CPU on very affordable price you can find the link to masked compute with 50% discount in video's description. So what I am going to do on this system I am just going to go with this quad the IQ1S because that is the smallest I could find around 60 GB. So I already have right clicked here and then I have down downloaded it on my local system so it should be so i'll quickly show you like this so these are the two quads around 60 gb i already have downloaded i also have installed llama.cpp to save the time but if you don't know what llama.cpp is how to get it installed just watch this first video easiest way to install llama.cpp locally and you should be able to become a hero from zero in no time even if you have never heard of llama.cpp if it doesn't work, I will return your money back. Okay, yeah, so now we know what we are going to do. Let's now run this thing. 
I'm just going to run first just to show you how exactly this thing works with llama.cpp, llama CLI and the name, the full path of my first GGUF context file. I'm just saying it, say hello. I'm offloading all the layers to the GPU if possible. And you can see that it is giving me this um, CUDA driver error. I'm just first checking if it runs on my CPU or not. Otherwise, I'll just enable my driver. Okay, so you can see that I tried it on my CPU. It got killed. So I will just enable my driver and then we will try it on a GPU. And now you can see that it has found my CUDA device because I enabled this driver and it is now loading the model. Let's wait for it. And of course, there will be a performance hit for sure because it is just one bit quantization, which is very aggressive, but we will see. And there you go. It has loaded the model as you can see. And then after loading, it is just now printing the response while it prints. Let me quickly show you the VRAM consumption. My system is very slow, by the way. There you go. So <laughs> it is just 8 GB of VRAM, which it is consumed, which is always good. Do you see? This is the quantization. But it is going to jump up, up and down a bit. So it is thinking. It is understanding. It is extremely low context. Remember, it is just one bit. So what I'm going to do, because it is just consuming very low VRAM, I'm going to go a bit brave here. So with that, I mean, I'm just going to go and then try out Q4KM. I will try to offload some more MOE layers, as I mentioned earlier, earlier so that we could utilize more VRAM. But let's first check out what exactly this prints. There you go. There is no hidden complexity and it is still printing. So I'll just let it print. And you can imagine, I mean, how much token per second that is very, very slow. But at least the good thing which needs to identify here is it is not hallucinating still as of yet, because normally what happens when we use this sort of very aggressive quantization, it just keeps repeating stuff in loop. Still hasn't happened that, so which is very impressive. I will let it finish and then I'll show you. And meanwhile, also let me explain this command to you. I think I didn't do it. So the key thing is that as you can imagine, this is Llama CLI. You can also serve the model and use it with your Python script. I am giving it this GDUF file. I'm using Jinja. The context size the model could look at is 16K at one given point in time. And then NGL means that I am loading 50 layers to GPU. And then we have this OT FFN. So this is offloading all the mixture of expert layers to CPU RAM, which is saving my VRAM. That is why you see the VRAM consumption is so low. So that is why I'm using both CPU and GPU. And uh, I already said that Jinja is, you know, uh, it uses the correct chat template. And this is required for GLM models, by the way. Anyway, and then P is our prompt. And these are the hyperparameters, temp and um, temperature and the top P, which determines how the model is going to respond more creative or more deterministic and the selection of the tokens from the cumulative um, percentage. So there you go. So it, it is understanding still going strong. And meanwhile, I'm also downloading all these three quants uh, from the Q4KM. And you can see that the size is just close under 150 gig. It is being downloaded at the moment. Okay, I think I have given enough um, thinking room to this model. Looks good. The only thing is that it is thinking a lot for a simple, simple question because it was not expecting it. So, but it has got it right. It's not revealing its internal chain, but it is also not hallucinating, thinking a lot. And now let me just cancel it. And you can see that it is 0.5 token per second, which is quite low. I'm just going to exit or quit from here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to now, sorry, I'll just quit. And then I'm just going to 
go and run the q4 km one so this is a code which i am going to run same command but with a different quant q4 km i'm offloading 70 um, layers to the gpu and then the prompt is to create a self-contained html lending web page for a modern ai startup including hero section features and all that stuff and let's see what it is able to do with this quant and there you go this time you can see that it is running quite fast the reason being i have offloaded everything to gpu let me show you my gpu gpu vram too i'm just going to run it with nvtop so it is consuming you know fully loaded to the gpu just around 80 gig of vram fully consumed and it is creating now so look at the thinking process looks great it has identified and remember it's still q4 km which is running which is much better than of course a q1 quant so let's wait for it to finish and then i will show you the end result and there you go so it is just hallucinating with it this is what i meant that when it hallucinates when the quant is not good this is what happens and i'm showing you as is so q4 km is not good the previous one was good so i'm not going to go with it this is a token per second so this is what we know at the moment but i think the previous code you can simply use it all on uh, gpu let me quickly use the previous one and fully load it onto the gp and create this landing page and show you yep so this one is going well And this one is even taking less VRAM. You can see just 61 gig of VRAM. Okay, so let me just let it finish and I will show it to you in the browser. And there you go. This is what it has created. The sim, you know, the smallest quad. There you go. So, and it is all responsive to, there is even a form which it has created. And I mean, this is simply amazing and awesome. Really don't have even words to explain it the quantized version, the pruned version of GLM 4.7 in front of you, ladies and gentlemen. So reproofs that smarter compression beats brute force by intelligently pruning redundant experts while preserving the router's dynamic control. And that is where Cybers has really, really done wonderful work. So please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. Please also follow me on X if you are looking for AI updates. Thank you for all the support.